Hi guys. Okay, so today is going to be all about a meat dish. Um, I'm going to show you guys how to make homemade meatballs. These are Italian style meat meatballs, but you can actually do this method with hamburger patties, meat loaf. Um, you could grind it up and um, make it into um, some some meat sauce for even pasta or um, lasagna. Uh, there's lots of different options when you're using ground beef, regular meat. Um, you could use pork. Um, you could use um, some veal. Um, I don't know if you can get your hands on some of that, but if so, um, any type of meat will work or a meat alternative if you are vegetarian. Um, you could do Beyond Meat or um, a tofu pasta or something like that. Um, I'm going to show you that um, I did get some ground beef here. It's about a pound and it was $3.49. Um, it is a 73 lean and um, 27 fat. So that means that there's 27% fat that has been put into the ground beef. Um, then it was all um, ground up and then leaves us with this with this ground beef. So um, just so you know what that means when you are looking in the grocery store aisle, um, it, the lean, remember a lean piece of meat means something that doesn't have much fat at all to it. Um, when we're talking about marbling with steaks. Um, it's about the fat that's the intermuscular fat that goes through the meat. Um, but with ground beef, since it's a ground up, you don't know what the marbling looked like before. So they're going to tell you on the package um, how much of that percent was in there. Um, so for my um, meatballs, I'm going to be using a pound of ground beef and a pound of pork sausage. Um, I use the sweet Italian since I'm going to be using this for meatballs. Um, but they have spicy, they have just regular pork sausage, whatever it was, or you could just use this um, by itself if you didn't want to use the ground beef, or you could you could mix a couple of different, maybe turkey and uh, pork or whatever you would like. But remembering too that um, these are meats, so they need to be cooked to 160 degrees in internal temperature. Um, with meatballs, they're going to um, cook up pretty quickly. So I'm going to show you uh, what my recipe entails. Um, if you didn't have these ingredients, um, you could switch it out for something that you did have at home. Um, so just uh, follow along with me. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to use um, some panko breadcrumbs because this helps as a binder. You could always use um, some crackers ground up or something like that or breadcrumbs, but I'm using some panko that I have and it's going to be a cup of panko. And remember, this is a dry measuring cup because it is dry. And then I'm going to a dry item and then I'm going to do a third of a cup of milk. So this is my liquid measuring cup. I've seen some people um, not doing that and using the wrong measuring cups for the wrong things. Remember, liquid goes in a liquid and dry goes into a dry. Um, so I'm going to soften up these panko breadcrumbs just a little bit while I get my other ingredients going. Um, just so that they're not too raw inside of my meatballs because uh, the meatballs do cook up fairly quickly. So I'm just giving them a little bit of moisture. And you could do the same thing with your crackers if you had it that you're going to be adding um, to, your, to the mixture. So I'm going to set that aside and then I'm going to get my other ingredients going. I just need to grab another bowl here. second. Okay, so to my bowl, I'm going to add that ground beef. And if you wanted to make tacos, uh, you could do that. You could season the meat, put this right into the pan, um, uh, cook it up for some nice beef tacos, burritos. You could make this mixture and season it up and use it for taco salad. Uh, you can make burger patties, chili, um, any type of thing really. And then if you had bigger pieces of meat that weren't ground up, you could use those for fajitas, carne asada, um, even go into an Asian side like a teriyaki steak skewer or beef and broccoli. I mean, really, there's so many options when it comes to beef. So think about what you have at home and what you can utilize there. So I'm just going to add both of them. You can see how that is turning a little bit gray. And remembering too that that's just the oxidation that happens to meat um, once it does hit the air. That's where you'll start to see a little bit of that gray color. 
Okay, so I have my meat there and I'm just going to keep that um, in the bowl and I'm going to chop up and get my other ingredients going. So I know what I need is some garlic. So I'm gonna bring my bowl back actually. Um, I need some garlic. I need four cloves of garlic. So um, what a, one clove would be about half a teaspoon. So, um, and this is finely minced chopped up garlic. If you had whole cloves, you could do it that way. But I'm just going to add them right here because I know I need four cloves of garlic. I also need two eggs and I'm just going to crack those right into my bowl here because I'm going to mix everything up together. I also need one cup of Parmesan cheese. You could use other cheese too here. It doesn't have to be, but this is an Italian style meatball. So, um, so I'm just going to use a Parmesan cheese, which remember going back to our cheese lecture, this is the hardest cheese because it has had nearly almost all of the moisture removed. So that's why it can stay uh, shelf stable for so long. I'm also going to add some fresh uh, basil and parsley to this. You, If you had some uh, dried herbs at home that you wanted to use, this is parsley, and I'm going to chop that up. I'm gonna make sure that I don't get um, too many of the stems because those could be a little bit bitter, um, the stems of fresh herbs. They, they're still edible, but they just um, can give a little bit of a bitter taste to it. So you wanna try to remove those if you if you have um, some fresh herbs at home. You could add um, some thyme, uh, rosemary, uh, oregano, whatever you have, that's totally fine. Um, I know I'm gonna need about um, a fourth of a cup, which isn't that much. If you only had dried, you wanna know that fresh herbs are less intense than your dried herbs. Your dried herbs are two times the amount of a fresh herb. So if it called for, let's say, a tablespoon of, of fresh uh, parsley, and this is fresh, you would only use one teaspoon of dried parsley because it is two times the amount when it is dried. It intensifies by a lot. So I'm chopping this up. This was my parsley. I'll add it right into my bowl. Again, it doesn't have to be fresh. It can be dried if you have it. And then I'm also going to add some fresh basil. Um, so this goes back to our knife skills. Um, I'm gonna take my basil leaves. I'm gonna lay them out flat here. And I'll show you, like I've showed you um, a couple months ago, time's flying. This is the best way to cut basil leaves. And if anybody remembers back to what this technique was called, so you roll them up here and then you run your knife through this. And this was called chiffonade, chiffonade technique. And it's because it mimics a ribbon-like See that, how beautiful that is? So this would be good for garnishing. We're obviously not going to be garnishing. We're going to be adding it straight to our meatballs. So I'll chop it down a little bit further so that it's not such like ribbons. It's more finer so that it kind of disperses there through the meatballs. But this would also be great if you wanted to make a meat sauce for pasta or lasagna like I, to I told you too. You would just gr grind it all up in the pan rather than making them into meatballs. Okay, so my other ingredient that I need is about a fourth of a cup of white onion. This is actually a yellow onion um, that I have here. There are different types of onions, um, red onions, white, yellow, pearl onions, all different types. And that's, um, I'm, I, I made some slices down and then I went across and now I'm just chopping it this way. And now it's in perfect cubes. So, save some time. And the more and more you chop, the better and better you'll get the faster, more precise. Take your time though, there's not a rush. Okay, 
Now I'll add that right into my bowl here. And then the next ingredient that I need is a teaspoon of Italian seasoning. There we go. I also need some salt, which is another teaspoon of salt. I also need some black pepper, which I'm just going to grind straight from here. This is actually a tri-colored pepper. Um, there's some different peppercorns in there. I really like the taste of it rather than just your regular old black pepper. There's some pink, white, pepper, and black, um, and I think it's a green one too in there. So tri-colored, it's great. Gives it better flavor. And then I'm going to, like I've told you guys before, I like a little spicy here, so I'm gonna add some cayenne pepper. Another alternative would be some red pepper flakes if you had them, or if you don't like things spicy, you don't have to add any spice at all. So now this is the fun part. You're going to add those breadcrumbs back in here. Then you're just gonna mix everything up with your hands. You wanna make sure Everything is nice and incorporated. Get, get that egg with the yolk and stuff. That acts as your binder. It also gives it flavor and fat because we know eggs also have fat, but this is what will keep everything together. So the combination between whatever breadcrumb, I use panko, you could use crackers, you could use uh, dried up bread for that matter, and then some um, eggs is what's going to be the glue to this recipe. So if we took this and we put it in a, into a pan um, or a Pyrex dish or something like that and we baked it, then we would just say it was an Italian meatloaf. If we formed it into some patties or you did some different ingredients and you took it out here and you made some, some patties with it and you put them on a grill or on a pan, then you have hamburgers. Or if you did some some seasoning and you put it in a pan and you did some tacos. Um, really, there's a lot of variations of meat dishes. And like I said, if you don't have meat at home, then you can use something else. Use mushrooms instead um, for some sort of casserole or mim that mimics meat. Whatever it is. So I'm just going to take... It looks pretty good here. All of that's all nice and mixed up. I'm just going to take a little bit here and I'm going to roll them into the size of about ping pong balls. Then I'm going to place them on something called a broiler pan. So if you have this at home, it has slits in the bottom here. And what it does is it helps whatever you're roasting in the oven. It catches all of that those fats or oils on the bottom. It also gives it kind of a, um, a heat that goes all the way, almost like a convection type heat um, because it's raised up. If you didn't have um, a broiler pan like this and you just had a pan with a rack on it, that would essentially um, act as the same thing. So um, it's good to do that because then whatever you're roasting, like meatballs that ha do have a lot of fat inside of them, then they don't just sit in all of that oil while they're cooking. They are kind of risen up and then the heat goes all the way around them. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make all my meatballs here and I'm going to put them all on my pan. I have already set my, um, my temperature in my oven to 425 degrees. Um, these will bake up fairly quickly. So I'm going to set my timer for 10 minutes and I will um, check them. If you have a thermometer at home and you want to check the internal temperature of the meatballs, make sure that they do reach that 160 degree um, temperature. That's great. Other than that, you, what you could also do is you can kind of flip them over once you check them in the oven and, um, and see if they're browned all the way around. If you open them up and they're very red and still juicy, kind of almost bloody inside, they're not ready yet. Make sure that they look really nice brown all the way through and then they're done. You can take them off, you can set them to the side, and then you could do another batch if you had a large batch of, of um, 
mixture there. Um, but remember, you you really can get creative with this meat lab. Um, think about what you have at home. If you want to make it something that you have with ingredients that you've never tried before, or you want to pull up a recipe and try that for dinner, um, impress your family members, um, you can do that as well. So um, let me know what you guys find in your house. I'm excited. You guys have been doing so wonderful with all of your cooking labs. So make sure that you fill out these follow along notes and then I will see you later in class. I'll take a picture when these come out and show you how they turned out. Bye.